Hello there, I am Patrick and I'm creating .NET and Blazor tutorials here on my channel if you don't know me yet. Today it's about Blazor WebAssembly but with .NET 8. Yes, it is different now. So when you create a Blazor project with .NET 8, you might just want to use the new Blazor Web App template of Visual Studio. But when you're using that out of the box, you are actually only using Blazor server or server side rendering actually. And you can then use interactivity with Blazor server. You can add streamed rendering. Well, at least for now with a .NET 8 Preview 7, there will be changes coming when you create a Blazor project and using the template, then you will also have the, well, Microsoft promised to add the check mark to also add WebAssembly out of the box. But for now, you would have to add WebAssembly, Blazor WebAssembly manually if you want to, or you use the CLI. Okay, that's also another option. But anyways, I want to show you today in this tutorial, how do you add Blazor WebAssembly to an existing Blazor Web app with .NET 8? I know it's all new stuff, so let's just have a look. First, maybe a quick word about what is actually planned with .NET 8 and Blazor. There is this beautiful thread here by Steve Sanderson or started by Steve Sanderson, the legend himself. And he's telling us that regarding WebAssembly, there are actually three approaches uh, that they are thinking of how to include it into the new Blazor really, it is really the new Blazor because when you're starting Visual Studio, what you will see in a minute, and then you want to create a Blazor application, then there's actually only one template left to rule them all. So here you see approach A would be a single project with both Blazor server and WebAssembly, and we exclude it, WebAssembly, by default with a client shared folder here, right? And the other option, please, you can read it yourself, of course, if you want to, just wanted to tell you that real quick. And if you want to dive right into the implementation, then just check out the time codes and there you can, of course, skip to the implementation there. Next approach would be single project, approach B, single project include by default. And that would mean that you would have uh, a program client CS and a program server CS. So this is at least the idea behind it. But in .NET 8, the solution we get are two projects, meaning that we will have the default project where everything is actually Blazor server. You can add interactivity there. You can use stream rendering there. But if you want to use components rendered with the new render mode WebAssembly, then you would create a new client project. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this tutorial just for your information. And if you want to have a look at the code, there is this repository here by Microsoft actually, where you can already see that there's a server project, all the Blazor related stuff, and then also another really small project, the client project. And we will now use this one to help us creating the WebAssembly project. So let's dive into it real quick. The .NET Web Academy is now open for enrollment, but only for a really short time. Spots are also limited. So if you're interested, then please check out the link in the video description. In the Academy, we cover all things related .NET, Blazor, Tailwind CSS, Git, GitHub Actions, deploying to Azure, many more stuff. So if you're interested, please go down to the video description, check out the link. And if you're thinking, maybe my company could cover the cost of the academy, then great news, I've got an email prepared for you that you can just copy and paste and then send to your boss. Again, link in the video description. And now let's continue with the tutorial. We go to Visual Studio, it's version 17.8. Preview. This is important because here I'm using .NET 8 Preview 7. And when you decide to create a new Blazor project, I see it here in my recent project templates, but of course you can also just search for Blazor here. And then the new thing really uh, that Microsoft wants you to use actually is the new Blazor Web App Project. Again, one template to rule them all. You go to next, we call this Blazor Wasm maybe, Wasm dot net eight, just the example. And then you see that configure for HTTPS, this is standard, right? We can activate server interactivity components. This 
this check mark here, this is Blazor server, all right? Not server-side rendering, don't confuse this, please. Server-side rendering just means that you get the complete HTML and then when, when you, you download the HTML to the browser, the browser then displays this thing, but you won't be able to, well, click a button and then see a result. I know this sounds strange maybe, but uh, this server-side rendering just means when you use a form, then you would have a page refresh, correct me if I'm wrong, but not in this case, right? So with this thing now, you would use Blazor server and there will be, at least Microsoft promised that, or Daniel Roth promised that, that there will be another option here to also activate WebAssembly by default into this template. You can already do this actually with the help of the CLI, but let's just do this here step by step. So I think this helps better understanding what is actually going on here. So there will be another check mark in the future, maybe in a couple of days already with preview eight. Let's see about that. But at uh, the latest, I guess, on release date, the, I guess, November 14th will be the day for the final version of .NET 8. Can't wait to get it. All right, so you see it here, you've got your Blazor server stuff. Pages are now the example uh, files here. We've got a counter page where we can see the new render mode server. But Let's ignore that. We dive right into WebAssembly. So what we do here actually is right click the project, add a new project. And for now we can choose a Blazor WebAssembly app. And let's just call this um, BlazorWasm.net8 and then client, maybe not the best name, but I guess it works. And here now you also see there's no ASP.NET Core hosted option, right? So uh, we can uh, try to figure this out later in another video, for example, when you wanna add a web API, you don't know how to do this yet. So you wanna use now Blazor server and uh, stream rendering and Blazor WebAssembly, but they should use a web API. So you have th three projects there. How would you do that? If you wanna know, please write it down in the comments and I'm happy to create another video. So create WebAssembly and you see that still we've got a bunch of files here that we do not really need, for instance, WW root is not necessary. We actually already have a WW root folder with a CSS file. So this uh, may result in some conflicts. So let's just delete this. And then another thing would be the app razor. This is also not necessary here. So delete this as well. We've got the pages here and the only components, I'm just using the other example, I want to use is actually the counter razor. So let me just move this to the shared folder and then delete this file and this file here and also these pages. Well, just the whole folder, right? <laughs> I think this works. Now we've got the counter here. As you can see, it's still a page, but again, not on my turn. I don't want this to be a page. I want this to be just a component that is used by WebAssembly. You see here that here we actually got a page called counter. So what we can actually do now is we just remove the whole stuff here. And also for now, uh, the render mode, because the render mode for the whole page, there will be again with the release, this render mode WebAssembly, but for now this does not work, but we can tell this, the component specifically that it should use WebAssembly. So we've only have the page here on Blazor server or on the server side with the page title. That's nice. And this is everything we need regarding the page. Regarding the other files for the client, we've got the counter component, we've got the imports and the program CS, right? Now the program CS, as you can see here, now we've got an error because we deleted the app file. We actually don't need that, right? So we can delete it and also delete the using statements here. Great, so this is our now minimized program CS file. And then the next thing we need is the server has to know what's going on in the client. So we just add uh, a project uh, reference. All right, and that's the one. So simply the client project Awesome. Another thing we have to add is the NuGet package for WebAssembly. So here, manage NuGet packages. And I'm happy that I already typed it a couple of times now. So yep, there it is. Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Server. This is what we need. So please install that as well. Again, 
when the template is there with uh, the full release of .NET 8, I guess you do not have to, do, to implement it by yourself, but still I like it that way because then you really know what's going on. Uh, make sure to check this here, include pre-release so you get the .NET 8 Preview 7 version. Right, that's that. And now the last thing we have to do is modify the program CS of the server project. Here you already see add server components. You already add now WebAssembly components. And we also have to add a render modes. So here we've got the server render mode and then also the WebAssembly render modes. And with that, we are already done. So let's run this, I hope you're done. Maybe I forgot something, I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. All right, here it is, and we get this new security alert because of HTTP 3, which is used now. That's awesome. But now let's open the console real quick. And now it will be interesting what's going on here. Let's just focus on the counter page. Here we do not see anything interesting, right? Because let's have a look again. We see the counter page here got the page title and that was taken from our page here. Great, so this actually works, right? But now we wanna see the component. So how is this done? Well, we just add it here at the counter with this crazy name now because, well, you know, it's from the other client, uh, from the other project. And here now we can close it and now comes something beautiful the new render mode, although IntelliSense or IntelliCode has no idea what I want here, but then we can give this the new render mode, and then there should be something available, WebAssembly, all right? We also got server and auto. So just to explain this real quick, server means well, it would be exactly the same thing that we had before without WebAssembly. So in essence, we would have a WebSocket connection and with the help of this WebSocket connection, then we get the interactivity. So you click the button, you see a result. WebAssembly now means we download the component, let's say to the browser, to the client, have no latency issues, right? No WebSocket connection. We just use it on the client and we see directly what's going on. And with auto now, the big promise is, and it actually already worked, is that we start with the server interactivity. So we have a WebSocket connection, but in the background, we already also download the WebAssembly stuff. So the next time the user visits the page and the WebAssembly stuff is still cached, then we will use WebAssembly much faster. Great stuff. So now let's just say WebAssembly, hit save and restart the application and we get an error. Why is that? Add render, mm -hmm, I see it is not render mode with a capital M, lower case M. Let's try that one more time. And there we are. And you see loaded big file will be smaller when published. And we can also actually see it here as well in the WASM tab that the .NET native WASM was downloaded. Don't get confused by these WebSocket things. These uh, you should only see uh, when you're developing on your local machine, right? This is the important stuff. And also in the console, we don't see anything uh, WebSocket related, right? So click me here and this works and this is everything and if you want to know more also about the other new render modes and also the other features like streamed rendering then i recommend checking out the video you see here on the screen until then thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button thank you very much and i see you next time take care